This episode of Quilt Maker's Lessons in Creativity is brought to you by FOF, the sewing machine for quilters. Hi, welcome to Quilt Maker's Lessons in Creativity. I am Jenny K. Parks, and I'm going to take you through all eight episodes and just expand your knowledge and creativity when you're talking about quilting. It, we are going to have a lot of fun. We're going to talk about thread and fabric selections and what to look for in a machine and even how to expand the quilt, quilt block to make it into a decorative pillow if you want to add to that. The quilt we're using as the basis for this series is Buttercup and Blue by Kate Colleran. She designed it and constructed it. I think it's just lovely and so much potential there for creativity. It was featured in the March April 2016 edition of Quilt Makers, so you want to get yourself a copy and check it out. Now, one of the first things that people ask me when we talk about quilting is what to look for in a machine, especially if you're just starting out. What I did when I selected a machine is I went to, I think it was a quilt fair, maybe like, like a sew expo type of situation. I went there and I went to each and every sewing machine booth and I said, I'm a quilter, show me what you've got for me. It gave me a chance to see every machine and try it hands-on to figure out what I liked the best, what I thought would work the best for me. Each one has a little bit of different, different personality, so try that. That might be a good way to see what's going to be the best fit for you. I ended up choosing, choosing a FOF, and we're going to come over here to this FOF, and I'm going to show you some of the features that are really beneficial to quilters to have. So when you're looking for them, these are good features to have. I love this one. This is a needle up, needle down. That means as I'm sewing, I can push that button and it'll keep the needle right in place. It, it'll put it down in the fabric so it holds that fabric still. It doesn't move, which is a good thing. All right, so that's a really nice feature. There's also a knot, so you can just tie a little knot at the beginning or the end or wherever you need that knot to go in there. It, it's really nice to just push a button and have that take care of it for you. There and cutting the thread, oh my goodness, the machines today, they are just lousy with, with thread cutters all over the place and it's wonderful. That is very, very nice. And to move the foot up and down, you have these two buttons here and, and uh, it's really nice to be able to do that, just up and down, up and down, real quick and easy if you'd like to. One of the features that they're starting to carry now, um, thinking about machine quilters, is the single hole needle plate. You can see on the one that's on the machine already, it has a wide hole for your needle to go back and forth to do decorative stitches and that kind of thing. The single hole allows just a very small amount of fabric to pull through, but it's not gonna force too much down. It makes your quilting to be really precise. That's a nice accessory to have when you're thinking about quilting and what you want to go on there. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit now about thread. These are your quilting piecing workhorses. These are 100% cotton, 50 weight, and that's just the best to quilt with. You don't want to use polyester or some kind of blend because for one, you usually quilt with 100% cotton, so putting cotton thread with cotton fabric, that's, that's the best way to do it. You don't want it, there won't be any stretching or anything like that that can sometimes happen with polyester or other unique novelty threads. So th again, these are your workhorses. They're 50 weight. Uh, you can do a big variety, but see this big cone? That's usually what I piece with. I buy, usually buy three. I have a gray and a black and a white, and those are pretty much what I use all the time, unless there's a reason to use this lovely chartreuse or brown or whatever color you want to. So more threads that you can choose from. I know you see a lot when you go places. And you think, gosh, why can't I use those threads? This is a monofilament thread. It's great for quilting on the top, but not for piecing. This is a thicker, thicker thread, and it works really well, very decorative. You can see how it's variegated. I love that. That looks so pretty when you're quilting. These are also, um, this is an embroidery thread, and you see it's very, very shiny, and you wanna, that's great on the top, again, when you're doing the quilting. And then your gold thread, oh, that's so fun. So fun to outline stuff with that. Oh, very, very, very fun. And these, I know you have them, these mystery threads. Um, just use these for decorative stuff. Sometimes we have no idea what is actually in them. So save it for decorative things or you know, in a pinch, desperation. But 
example I want to steer clear with these when we're talking about doing the actual piecing. For the decorative and the quilting on top, go for it. You know, Katie, bar the door. You can use whatever you want to. This is all about creativity, right? So we're going to give you some more things to be creative with. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit more about the machine and basic maintenance. A sewing machine is quite an investment, and you want to take care of that, just like you would take care of a car or, or any, any investment that you're going to make. You want it to last for a long time, right? Maybe you want to hand it down to people, and that, that's a wonderful, wonderful treasure. I learned to quilt on my, on my mother's 1950s cast iron Elna and it was a great, great machine to have, but it was so nice to move up to all the new features. But it was a treasure to be able to have that machine for my own to use for a while. So when we're talking about maintenance, you'll get little fuzzies and things in there. Usually the machine will come with a brush that you can use to get all the little fuzzies off. Another trick you can do to get the fuzzy stuff out of there, the lint and whatnot, is put a little tiny dab of machine oil on the Q-tip and they kind of run it around in the bobbin case to get those little fluffies out. You do not want to use canned air. The reason is because it will blow, it may blow some of the fuzzy stuff out, but it can also blow it back up into the machine. And you don't want to do that. You'll end up in the repair shop if they get too much packed in there. You want to avoid that. Oil your machine, just in the, the manual will say where to oil it and how often to do that, but just a little bit of oil and then also routinely, really like once a year, taking it uh, to be serviced, just to take care of all those little details and things that get out of alignment and out of whack. Some other handy stuff for quilters to have are some very awesome feet. Ugh, I just love these. The first one that we have, this one here, is see-through. So you can really catch all those little details, right? And it has, it has a guide. It has a little tiny hole um, for the thread to go through so it matches our single hole needle plate. But it also has this metal guide and that helps keep the fabric in line. It says, uh-uh, you're gonna stay right there while I stitch you, thank you very much. And that's, that's a very nice feature. There'll be some techniques that I show you in this series when we're cutting triangles that this, this foot right here that doesn't have the little flange hanging down is the perfect choice. So they actually, this is the first kind of foot I got. And then one of my friends showed up at the B and she had one with a little flange. And so I got some foot envy and I had to run right to the store and buy one of those too. So they're coming out with all kinds of stuff. Here is a metal one and it has a little extra hole. The hole's a little bit bigger. That's so you can adjust when you do your quartered seam allowance. You can adjust it just a skosh. You can move it slightly over to make a scant quarter of an inch. And we'll cover that later too. This one here is a clear foot, but it is a stitch in the ditch. It has the metal right there in the middle. And that helps you guide this so that you, you lay this right on a seam and you can stitch right there in your seam when you're doing your quilting. And that's very nice. One more thing to keep it under control. Now, we need to talk about needles. Some people think any old needle will do. Mm -mm, I don't think so. I don't think it will because needles are made to do different things. For example, this stretch needle is made to stitch through knit. It's made to, to um, maneuver the fabric apart in such a way that, that it doesn't cut a hole in the fabric, you know, because then your knit would unravel. But that's not what we're doing with quilting. We're piecing with a woven and, and we don't want to do that. Universal is kind of the same thing where um, it's made to do with everything for everybody and that's not what we, what's going to be best for you doing your quilting. There's a quilting. This is a great one. Um, notice it says, it says 80-12 for quilting and that's a great size, 80-12. 75-11, um, where it goes down just a little bit or where it goes up a little bit. If your thread is larger, like some of these larger ones that I've shown you, they will need, you'll need a bigger needle to do with those, to use those. But usually a 7511 or an 8012 quilting is your perfect choice. I know you probably get some variety pack that comes with your machine and that's great. There's lots of stuff you can do with that, but I would suggest with quilting things, 
just stick with quilting. It's designed to pierce through several layers at once, accurately, quickly, precisely. It, it's just such a much better choice for you. Okay, so I hope you have some ideas about what to look for in a machine and some things to take care of and new threads and, and all that kind of stuff. Come back next time. We're gonna talk about our uh, fabric selection. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I'm gonna have a lot of stuff to show you and I look forward to seeing you again. Again, this is Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity. I'm Jenny K. Parks and I'll see you next time. This episode of Quilt Makers Lessons in Creativity is brought to you by FOF, the sewing machine for quilters.